Let's talk about 20 gifts that every guitarist will appreciate, including you. I'm David Harsh with Guitar Success For You. With Christmas, birthdays, and special occasions happening regularly, it's good to have a solid list of gifts you can choose from to give to the guitarist in your life, whether a spouse, family member, friend, or even yourself. I have people in my family who buy gifts for themselves even before I get a chance to buy them. Each of these gifts I'm gonna talk about today is practical, and they're all pretty affordable. They range from about $4 to about $170, and if you're wondering if I have links to these in the description below this video, the answer is yes. I even have a bonus gift I'll tell you about at the end that you might not even know about. Before we continue, just so you know what kind of guitarist I am, I'm an acoustic singer-songwriter, fingerstyle guitarist, and strumming folk pop artist, and I'm also a worship leader. So if you have any common ground with any of these descriptions, you'll definitely find some accessories here that will bless you. Let's get started. Let's start with picks. If you play the acoustic guitar and you like to strum, you may be on the lookout for a good kind of pick. Well, for about 20 years, I've been using the Jim Dunlop Standard 0.60 millimeter orange Tortex picks. These are just right in terms of sound, feel, and durability. The grip is good, the thickness is good, I don't wear them down, and they feel and sound great with strumming and flat picking on stage, on the worship platform, and in the recording studio. It's good to have plenty of picks nearby. I link to a 36 pack of these in the description below, but there's also an option to buy a 12 pack if you want to test the waters a bit. I think you'll really like these. Now, if you want to keep better track of your picks and be ready if you drop one, or you even want to alternate between strumming and fingerstyle quickly, I recommend one of these. This is the Jim Dunlop pick holder. I've seen people mount it on the back of the headstock, which to me is a little far away. I've also seen people mount it on the pick guard. To me, that's a little too much in the way. I actually like to have it on top of my guitar because to me, this is the ideal place for quick and easy access. Now, you may have noticed that I have a couple small strips of gaff tape holding it in place. Here's why. Several years ago, I played outside for a block party on a flatbed trailer in, wait for it, 108 degree weather. It was not my favorite, even though I had a blast playing that show. But partway through the set, I looked down in amazement and I saw the pick holder slide along my guitar like a pat of butter. The hot sun had melted the adhesive glue, so gaff tape became my buddy at that point. But this pick holder, which is highly affordable, can hold up to seven of my Jim Dunlop 0.60 millimeter picks. Very practical. Okay, I just shared a story about gaff or gaffer tape. I can't even begin to tell you how many different applications I've seen for gaff tape. Perhaps the most obvious and common is taping cables down. I have a rig that includes a 16 channel mixer with a lot of XLR and quarter inch cables that allows me to mix from stage. To keep my cables from becoming a huge mess of spaghetti and to minimize tripping hazards, I use gaff tape. If I wanna spike the floor of my teaching studio for where I want to place video equipment, I use gaff tape. If I need a temporary or even a long-term fix, I often use gaff tape. I could probably make a video about gaff tape and its many uses, but for now, you probably see the value. This brand is Pro Gaffer Gaffer's Tape, two inches wide, black. It's not the cheapest, but it's the best. Some gaff tape leaves a residue over time. This brand is so much less prone to do that. It might not be super glamorous or fun as an accessory, but I think we can both agree that it's super useful, so a roll of gaff tape could be a great gift. Let's talk about capos for a moment. The best capos on the planet, in my opinion, are manufactured by the G7th Capo Company in the UK. I know one of their guys over there. His name's Tommy Luce, and he's super gracious about providing excellent support and encouragement. You don't have to look around much to realize that G7th is very active in the guitar community. This capo, or as the English would say, capo, the G7th Performance 3 is a very precise tool and allows for balanced, customizable tension. I love what it does, and it requires minimal retuning once I've placed it on the neck. It can be easily removed, 
And like other capos, it can be attached to the headstock when not in use. Treat yourself to a G7th capo. All right, I've got one more capo to show you. Now, there are dozens of capos out there, but this one is a bit unique and simultaneously very useful. It's called the glider capo. Why? Because after it's placed on the neck, it can glide up and down the frets. You can use your strumming or picking hand to move it, or you can use your fretting hand thumb on the back of the neck to help move it along. Pretty cool, huh? Have you seen one of these before? I like it because it's the only capo that moves, but also because it can be stored at the nut. Now, notice that I said at the nut, not behind the nut. If I move it too far past the nut, it will push down on the strings and create some slight intonation problems. So if you want a capo-less guitar for a moment, place it right on the nut, and then pull it onto the frets, and then you can move it up the glider capo. This is the Groove Gear Fret Wraps String Muter. Some guitarists and bassists use this to deaden their strings for playing up the neck. Now, I use it behind the neck because, strangely, when I strum, especially muted strums, the headstock strings behind the nut ring sympathetically. It's kind of annoying. Check out how it sounds without the fret wrap. You hear that ringing? And now, listen to the difference. Right? The other way I like to use this is to keep it on my guitar neck when the guitar is on stage on a stand and I'm playing another instrument that might cause the guitar to ring. Again, sympathy avoided, especially if for some reason the sound tech unmutes the guitar unintentionally. So as you can see, this Groove Gear Fret Wraps string muter has many uses. Let's talk about guitar stands for a moment. For me, the best guitar stand on the market is the Hercules. This comes as a floor stand and it's super stable. One of the things I really like about it is the clamp at the top, which closes when there's a gravitational pull on it when the guitar is placed on it. And it opens up right away when you lift your guitar. Super well designed, very rugged, very durable. I've used other brands that have eventually fallen apart. I've had several of these Hercules stands for two decades without any incident. A sequel to the Hercules floor stand is the Hercules wall mount guitar hanger. As you can see behind me, I've got a guitar mounted on the wall. I actually have four of these here on the walls of my teaching studio. The same principle applies to placing the guitar in the clamp. It closes with gravity and opens up when you lift up the guitar. Super helpful, sturdy, and accessible. And if you have young ones running around, having your guitar up on the wall makes it a little bit further out of reach. What about keeping time? I recommend a metronome. Yes, I know what you might be thinking. There are metronome apps out there. I absolutely use an app from time to time, but there's something about having an actual metronome in your hands to work with. Now, is a metronome really necessary? Let me answer that with a quick story. When I was in college, and this was before all the apps that are out there, I studied under a tremendously gifted conductor. This guy was a monster musician. He could play piano better than just about anybody I knew, and whenever he got up to conduct the orchestra that I sang with, he would reference a metronome for tempo every time for every song. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. This metronome keeps me honest. It prevents me from dragging or rushing, and it's great to practice with. This is the Seiko SQ50V Quartz Metronome. In terms of cost, it's mid-range. I like that it has multiple settings that are common to music, along with the Italian descriptions, from Largo to Andante to Presto. It also has two different beeps or ticks, a volume control, and a pulsing light. It has an A440 for tuning your fifth string fifth fret harmonic. 
It has an eighth inch input jack, so you can listen to it with a headphone over one ear or with an in-ear monitor. It also has a fold-out stand for resting on a table. And lastly, it's super durable. I'm telling you, I've had this thing for probably 15 years and I've dropped it several dozen times. It literally takes a lick and keeps on ticking. It's small enough to put in my guitar case and I just love having it nearby. Now, did you catch just a moment ago that I can use the A440 from my metronome to tune this note on my guitar? Now, a metronome or even a phone requires electricity in the form of a battery or a charger. But what can you tune with that requires no battery power whatsoever? That's right, a tuning fork. Now, some people have whole collections of tuning forks, and those people are called piano tuners, right? Well, this person is not a piano tuner, but he does like to tune his guitar, especially using the equal temperament method. That is a subject for another video, but in the event that you want to be able to tune your guitar, to a standard, an A440 tuning fork could be a game changer for you. But if you're just getting started, a tuner would be my best recommendation. Speaking of tuners, here's what I have to say. Having a tuner in your pedal board is a good measure if you're gonna be plugging in a lot. This is a pedal board I've designed, with some help, for playing an electric touchboard instrument called the Chapman Stick. All the signal paths terminate in this tuner, which is made by Peterson. And of course, this tuning pedal works fabulously for guitar as well. It's called the Strobo Stomp Classic, and it is very precise. Peterson is known for having a sterling reputation for precise tuners of many different sizes. I'll show you a picture of a slightly smaller version of the Peterson Strobo Stomp LE guitar tuner. This would be the latest version of this tool. Now, if you're going to play plugged in, but also unplugged, I recommend the Peterson Strobo Clip. Now, this one here that I'm putting on my guitar is several years old, but it's still working just as well as the day I bought it. How this tuner works is this. It gets its information through sound vibrations through the guitar neck. So even if you've got external noises all around you, it can still be possible to tune with this strobo clip attached. I prefer a quiet room to tune in, but I love the precision of this tuner. Here's a photo of the latest version of the Peterson strobo clip tuner, which I of course link to in the description below this video. I hope you pick one up. If you play with a strap, how do you keep your guitar attached to that strap? I love the Fender Strap Lock system. The hardware is pretty inexpensive and it allows for a strap to connect to your guitar and stay locked on until you decide to take it off by pulling on the knob to unlock it. It's available in black, chrome, and gold. We're about two thirds of the way through. If you're getting some value and you wanna see some of the upcoming video awesomeness that we'll be churning out on this channel, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. We're grateful to have you here. Okay, let's keep going. I get this question all the time. What kind of guitar strings do you use? My answer, as it has been for over two decades, is Elixir NanoWeb Mediums. I've used 8020 bronze and phosphor bronze, but I always keep the same gauges, which are 13 to 56. Wanna know how much I believe in this product? I decided at one point to start saving the tops of the Elixir string boxes I've gone through to see how many strings I've actually used. Watch this. To date, I'm fast approaching about 1,000 sets of strings that I've put on my guitars. That's how much I believe in these strings. These are all box tops. Now, I was hoping Elixir might want to partner with me, but after my most recent email to them, they said, no, they get too many requests, which I suppose is a good thing. Nevertheless, I still love and want to promote their product. I encourage you to check them out. They partnered with Gore-Tex, you know, that company that makes weatherproofing fabric. The strings are coated with this thin Gore-Tex coating. It's called NanoWeb coating. And it actually helps reduce moisture from the hands and the elements and prevents oxidation and corrosion, thereby providing a longer life to the strings. The tone isn't really compromised either, in my opinion. Best feature of all, there's much less string noise when moving up and down the frets. 
Now, if you've seen my video on how I replace a broken string, you know that I like to use a handy tool by Diodario that serves as a string winder, string cutter, and bridge pin remover, all in one. This portable pro winder is not super sharp, like a pair of pliers or clippers, but it does trim the strings very well, and it winds them. And as I mentioned, it helps remove bridge pins for restringing. I don't think a lot more needs to be said about this all-in-one tool, except that it is awesome. This is the Coda Stomp Bluetooth Page Turner. This pedal connects with your tablet and allows you to move forward and backward with PDFs you upload to multiple interfaces. There are free and paid tablet apps. There are multiple ways to use this tool, not just for turning pages, but even for advancing slides. Rob Hampton, the inventor at Coda Music Technologies, is a friend of mine, and I'm excited to get the word out about this amazing tool. I've only had this for a few months, but let me tell you, it has already proven itself. I've used it to turn pages with my feet so I don't have to stop strumming my guitar. I brought it to a workshop I taught with renowned session guitarist Dave Cleveland, and to set him up for success, I loaded up a PDF document into my iPad with 10 songs that he could choose from and toggle back and forth with using the Coda Stomp. Also, in other arenas, I've had the privilege of doing some guest conducting, and when I've slaved my iPad to this Stomp pedal, my page turning as I conduct goes from nine page turns to zero page turns. It's super efficient. I even collaborated with a violinist recently on a seven page arrangement I put together of an instrumental piece. And to lighten her load from having to bow and turn pages, I presented her with my iPad all loaded up with the PDF and the stomp pedal. And she was delighted because she also had zero page turns. She could keep bowing throughout the piece and our presentation presentation came together seamlessly. Let's talk about strengthening our fingers for scales, tapping, and chords. This Grip Master has served me very well. I can even think through scale forms when I use it. Now, a word to the wise. Know your limitations, especially if you've experienced any sort of hand injury or fatigue, like repetitive strain injury or carpal tunnel syndrome. These kinds of exercises are only meant to help you, but like anything, if used to excess, they can cause muscle strain. This one is the heavy tension. I started years ago with the medium tension. There's even a light tension if you want to start slow. I link to all three in the description below this video. Another hand exerciser is this set of two Chinese bowding balls. These have been around for centuries, and they're just fun to roll in my hands. They are less of a strengthener and more of a way to move your hand muscles. Now, these particular balls have bells inside that shine. There are other versions of these that are silent. Again, I link to both versions below. But my favorite hand exerciser is the Omni Grip. This is a great tool for getting those angles for bar chords or even strengthening individual fingers. It's also a great de-stressing squeezy toy. I buy these in bulk because I typically lose them and I have to track down another one. I probably have six or seven of them in different places around the house. Word to the wise, if you're gonna take one of these on a plane, be very transparent with the people at the TSA scanner because at first glance, under the x-ray machine, this sort of looks like a grenade, even though it's not. <laughs> Now, if you want a closer look at these three hand exercises I just talked about, you can check out this video. Sometimes when I'm traveling, my guitar is not within reach, but I can still practice. How is this possible? I bring this along with me. One of my members inside Guitar Success For You told me about this. It's a pocket guitar practice neck. I know, right? You're like, what? It basically has the equivalent of the first five frets with strings suspended over them. So you can practice with your fretting hand, whether for scales or chords, and it feels very much legit. It comes with a handy tote bag and even has a handy little wrench that you can use to adjust the tension of the strings. Now, the downside is they don't really make any tunable sounds, but you can adjust the tension and make the strings feel mighty close to what they'd feel like if you were fretting them. So maybe get one of these. Okay, so those are 20 gifts for the guitarist in your life. Once again, they are, drum roll please, Jim Dunlop Tortex Picks, the Jim Dunlop Pick Holder, a roll of Pro Gaff Gaffers Tape, the G7th Performance 3 Capo, 
the glider capo, the Groove Gear fret wraps string muter, the Hercules floor guitar stand, the Hercules wall mount guitar hanger, the Seiko SQ50V quartz metronome, an A440 tuning fork, the Peterson Strobo Stomp LE tuner, the Peterson Strobo Clip tuner, the Fender Strap Lock system, Elixir Acoustic NanoWeb strings, the Diadario Pro Winder, the Coda Stomp, the Grip Master, whichever tension you want, the Chinese Bow Ding Balls, the Omni Grip, and the Pocket Guitar Practice Neck. Ready for the bonus gift you might not have been thinking about? It's a membership to Guitar Success For You. In a single sentence, Guitar Success For You is a one-of-a-kind online learning experience with a six-stage proven success path, a collection of hundreds of years of guest expert wisdom, and a community that provides accountability and encouragement all to the glory of God. Want to know more? Please check out guitarsuccess4u.com. We have a special free guitar web masterclass you can go through to help clarify your goals and your vision as a guitarist. Well, I hope our discussion today gave you some ideas. There are more accessories out there, but I thought 20 would be a nice round number. You may have heard of or seen some of these, but some of them may be new to you. You may own and use some of these, and if you do, you know how good they are. But if you're thinking about a gift for the guitarist in your life, or maybe you just want to treat yourself to something, I encourage you to look below this video for the Amazon links to where you can buy them. I hope you do. It's a wonderful way to support us and help us continue to bless you with all the content we're putting together. These are affiliate links, which means that we'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. So happy shopping, but also happy playing. I'll see you in the next video.